As we've mentioned, it's a brutal day for people who cared about Chris Mortensen, and there were a lot of them. He passed away mm -hmm. Sunday morning at the age of 72, a legend, a pioneer. And I think Adam Schefter will tell you, because I felt like I saw it happen on television, Adam Schefter was helped by Mort at every turn in a way that didn't seem threatening to Mort. And a lot of people in this business would have been threatened by Adam Schefter, but we'll get uh, his words. Thank you, Adam, for making the time for us. Can you tell us about your relationship with Mort? Yeah, I mean, it transitioned, Dan, and I appreciate you having me and my condolences to Mort's wife, Mickey, and his son, Alex, who he loved very much and talked about all the time. But my relationship with Mort was such where when I was at NFL Network and when I was a Denver newspaper guy, I looked at Mort as a legend in the business, somebody that I aspired to be like. There was Will McDonough. There was Mort. Um, they were the ultimate newsmen. And... When my contract was coming up at NFL Network, I got a call yesterday from John Walsh, and he said, I want you to know how much Moore went to bat for you and was integral in bringing you to ESPN. I said, I've, I've heard that, John. I know that people have brought that to my attention, that I'm not there without his support, without his recommendation, without his blessing. And he said, no, 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 I'm telling you, like he went to bat. You know, we got to get this done. And, um, you know, I, I always knew it, but it's another thing to hear it again on the day that we lose him. And, um, you know, he changed the trajectory of my life just as he changed the trajectory of so many other lives. You know, go ask Daniel Jeremiah what Mort did for him. Go ask Jeff Darlington what Mort did for him. Go ask so many people that are on ESPN. And... He went from being a legendary newsman in my eyes, one of the greatest reporters in sports history, uh, to becoming uh, a friend, an advisor, uh, somebody that I would lean on, learn from. Um, he was the best. He was the best. How uncommon is it in this competitive of a business, Adam, yeah. for all of what you said to be so? Because I found it deeply uncommon about him. The fact that everyone is talking about decency and kindness today. That's the word, decency. That's the word. And, you know, yesterday after, he, after, he, after we lose him, I can't tell you the number of people that reached out that shared their experiences with more more and here's the thing about it they were all incredibly thoughtful like him they were all remarkably decent like him and you know i get a text yesterday from chris ballard who's you know who seemed all emotional the coach general manager about how much mort supported his son playing football this year like nobody would have known that and chris was lamenting the fact that his son didn't get to meet more in person. Peyton Manning forwarded me, forwarded me seven, eight emails of emails that Mort had sent him through the years. And you just read them. And um, they're incredible in their thoughtfulness and support and just how much he cared for Peyton and people, not just Peyton. Um, I have those emails. Uh you know, so, you know, it's hard. I, I, you know, we spoke this week and, uh, you know, the, the, the irony is he actually sounded good to me this week. You know, there was a period um, during the season where uh, he had pneumonia. We were worried about him. Um, and uh, we were worried about him at that time. And, and he came back. We have this chain of coworkers, a text chain. And Mort's on it. And uh, our boss, Seth Markman, has pointed out to us how, how much life that brought to Mort, how much enjoyment, uh, just observations of the football world, the business, the world, whatever it would be. And, um, you know, when, when Mort went quiet for a couple of weeks in December, we got concerned. And then he was back to life, so much so that at 746 on Saturday night, he was texting with us. Um, and then he's gone Sunday morning. So 
Um, you know, it's amazing because it was such a insidious disease that he was fighting, but he really had done pretty well with it. And, and, uh, we thought he was out of the danger zone and then he went to sleep and just didn't wake up. So, uh, you know, we'll see what the autopsy shows, but uh, I just think he had been through so much physically. And even though he had been doing better, um, inside, I think he was just, uh, he was beaten up. Adam, Dan mentioned how uncommon, uh, Mort's, Mort's ability to be able to help and to want to advance people's career is in our industry, and yeah. he is right. And so I'm wondering, were you surprised upon meeting him how willing he was to help you to promote your career, to eventually make you what you are today, which is the number one NFL information guy in the industry? You know, when I got hired there, um, again, with his support, with his full support, um, we went to dinner in New York City, Smith and Walensky, and it was the first time that I ever had the chance to sit down with him at length. I had met him before. Um, we had talked before, but, um, you know, I hadn't had a chance to sit down and talk to him like that. And we talked about our families. We talked about our approach to the job. We talked about life and he was such a regular guy. Um, and the thing about him, and you guys knew him, um, he was somebody who in any room would be the single funniest guy in that room. And the guy who also would be the most credible guy in that room. You know, he was the only guy, you know, that could in the war room on Sunday, go make fun of Boomer. <laughs> just <laughs> Mercifully just go at him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had people laughing so many times. He had an unbelievable sense of humor that people, I, I don't know if they really know. You know, I, I mentioned in the obituary that we did on ESPN, you know, that, that Bill Tobin interview that he did with him, he set him up for that, for that great soundbite of Mel Kuyper Jr. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew where it was going to go. He kind of asked the question and sat back and got, to me, the greatest soundbite in NFL draft history with Bill Tobin saying, who the hell is Mel Kuyper? Um, you know, Mort had that little devilish side to him. Um, he was a very, very funny guy. Very funny guy. And, uh, uh, yeah, and he he was instrumental uh, in the lives of so many different people. Like, yeah, my story is my story, and there'd be a hundred other stories of people that Mort helped. So that's just who he was. You have some experience with grief. I don't know if, yep. you know, this was 2016 that he powered through stage four throat cancer. So you've had yeah. 10 years of warning that this day might come, right? But there is no real warning, correct, for the thudding finality of what no. somebody feels on Sunday no. morning. No. Um, uh, you know, we were sitting there at breakfast yesterday or lunch. It was about... 12.30, I got a call uh, from my boss, and, and he told I, I was like, I was completely floored, like I, I was in shock, and my daughter started crying. Um, and uh, it was a very emotional moment at our family table. Um, and like I said to you, he he was doing better. He, he really was. Like, yeah, uh, there were there were any number of times during the past eight years or so uh, that we thought he was in danger, um, that he was gravely ill. But I, I, I didn't think I was getting that call yesterday. Like, you know, I, I just didn't think that uh, I was getting that call. And, and that's, you know, that's the uh, sad part, aside from all that his family loses and his wife and son who were so dependent and loved him so much. Um, but, you know, we, there wasn't a time to say goodbye. Uh, you know, sit with him and share things. Dan, you've talked about your brother eloquently. And you've had time to sit with him in his final weeks and days, right? And and even though we had chances to tell Mort 
how much we loved him and appreciated him. You know, we, we didn't know the end was coming yesterday. That surprised everybody, including his own family. So um, just very sudden. And, you know, there, there's no way that it's ever going to be nice, whether it's a long drawn out process or whether it's quick and sudden. Um, but that's the way it went yesterday. And, uh, um, you know, you, sad. you knew him, uh, you knew him very, very closely. So I don't know if yeah. this is a dumb question to ask. Yeah. You. I have a hard time imagining him angry. Uh, I, I just have a hard time imagining it. Do you, did you see him angry very often? Yeah, not, not very often, but I've seen him angry and I'm trying to think of exactly when it was, you know, he, I think he obviously mellowed over the years. Uh, he talked about, I think having a temper, you know, when he was younger. And, and I said this to, uh, who was I talking to you? Somebody. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to me. Um, when ESPN, when I got hired at ESPN, when Mort signed off on that, blessed it, recommended it, he at that time was 57 years old. And I'm 57 now. And so I understand at that point where he was and what he would have looked to have done and accomplish. Um, and so that anger, that temper... I think it dissipated over time. Um, and, and I'll just say this, like there may have been a couple of things that I had seen temper wise, but, but when I was the guy who was wound up or stressed or just really tight over a story or something we had coming up, I mean, he was always the guy, always the guy that could deflate some of that tension from me. And, and, and I don't think there's anybody that could do that other than him. Only him. You know, he was the guy that could make you laugh at the most stressful moments. You know, like it was just him. Um, you know, uh, I wish we had the clip. I can remember when uh, we were going through the Richie Incognito uh, bully gate scenario. And uh, that morning, you know, we came out of the report and uh, Richie started coming at me on social media and, you know, more, you know, was a little bigger than me, you know, gets on TV and he's like, you know, Richie you kind of said, bring it, you know, more gets on TV, like a big brother. He's like, you want to bring, you want us to bring it, Richie, you come to me. Um, and that was more stepping in as a big brother uh, to defend his little brother who was being picked on. You know, that was more. What will you miss most about Mort, Adam? Everything. Everything. Um, just who he was, uh, the man he was, the decency he had, uh, what he meant to his family, what he meant to his friends, the humor, the laughs, the memories, all of it. Um, I don't know how you sum up a life well lived like that, but... Uh, you know, that was my, you know, like I said, uh, we spoke this past week for 15, 20 minutes, Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, I invited him, you know, there was a function going on in, on the East Coast. And I said, why don't you come stay in my house this June? And he said, uh, you know, I can't even think about June right now. Um, we'll talk, to, we'll talk about it when I get there. I said, okay, you, you got it more, but I'd love for you to stay here. You know, I'd love for you to come spend the weekend and hang out. Um, and, and I guess that was affirmation that he knew, um, that he wasn't counting on any time, even if he was in my mind doing better. So, um, that's kind of where he's at. When you ask me what I'll remember about him, I'll remember how much I loved him and how much he meant to me and how much he meant to so many people. How moved were you by the outpouring yesterday? Because it was uh, it was nice to hear everyone have consensus of opinion on how, yeah. how it is they were touched by him. It 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 turned it into truth for people who may not have known him to hear it from so many different places. Yeah, well, uh, this is not to diminish him. I mean, that, that's what happens when somebody 
you know, passes a lot of times. Um, but with him, all of it was real and all of it was true. You know, a lot of times when people go, people talk about what a great person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and many times it's right, but you know, with him, it was all true. And then some, it was all true. Um, that's how great he was. Adam, thank you for making the time. We won't uh, we won't bother you with any of the mundane football questions you're used to yeah. getting this time of year. <laughs> uh, heartbroken on your behalf and uh, broken yeah. in general. Thank you for being yeah, on. Thank with you, us, guys. Adam. I appreciate it, man, allowing us to celebrate more a little bit here. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Jessica, I would like a numerical answer to this question. What number person was I this weekend to text you the video of Sam Hartman running in slow motion with flowing hair, giving off a little bit of Momoa, uh, Jason Momoa, just uh, regal and slow motion, uh, sexy and tan. Uh, did, uh, Did a lot of people send you this? Honestly, Dan, people don't send me videos of Notre Dame stuff because everyone in my life knows that I've already seen them. And I think people get sick of me being like, haha, I've seen this. So, yeah, you might have you might have been the only one, actually. OK, because everyone else just knew better. They knew that you had, you had already seen Sam Hartman in slow motion, melting hearts all over the Internet. So that was slow motion. huh? I thought he was just slow. <laughs> <laughs> you just thought that was the speed of a Ran general a nine Notre six. Dame quarterback. <laughs> it was incredible, though. There was also another video, which um, I hopefully will get up here, of a NFL media person interviewing him. There was a lot of questions he got at the Combine about his hair. And a lot of people just asking him, like, what, what's your hair routine? What do you put in your hair? All this, like, That's our lane. And it's like... I, I love that the combine now has embraced some of the silliness, but Sam Hartman must have had the strangest weekend of his entire life just being thirsted after by all of the NFL media. I wish, I'm, I'm sure Caleb Williams would have liked some more of those gentle hair-related questions as opposed to, are you afraid to compete? First thing, he doesn't even sit down. <laughs> hey, are you, are you scared? <laughs> and Sam Hartman sits down and they're like, you're hot! What? You! you. There were, like, ah. There's not a gray in there, man. It looks great. I mean, it's silky, too. It's not just that it's black. It's resplendent. It's obvious the man is running with conditioner in his hair well, and and always plays with conditioner in his hair. Apparently, there's nothing in there. It's I don't, just natural. He said it's good genes. Do you think he ever considered tying the hair up? He or, was rocking a man bun during really? some of his training in this earlier this winter. Yes, Chris. Man. Yeah. Put it on the poll, please, yeah. Juju, at Lebetard Show. Do we have to test Sam Hartman's hair for steroids? <laughs> uh, there were a couple of things this weekend in football, Stugatz. A couple of, uh, well, one rule change that was talked about that Billy is, uh, I think, furious about. And uh, another one that I am very happy to see. Uh, they are now testing. I did not know this until this weekend. They are they tested at the Super Bowl and in other places the ability to remove the chain gang as the way that they oh, measure in that no. sport. They're talking about finding the technology. They've tested the technology. They have some optical things that work but will not work for 2024. So we will still have the antiquated yes. measuring system in a billion, in a multi-billion dollar sport where they're fighting for real estate over <laughs> inches we're still going to measure it with chains this year but soon that will be gone so it's so high tech this this new tech that they have is so high tech it's not ready for next year but we will still have elon musk trying to put chips inside of people's brains we still have the chips inside the the helmets and inside the shoulder pads but we can't get the chip inside the ball just yet not yet you've got optical tracking and they're still testing it and i hate it, that it has to have a vote they've got to vote on it too there might be look man these owners are old they might cling to their chain vote measurements. Down. <laughs> they might they might vote down look it would not surprise me if these owners are so stubborn about advancement that That'd they're like great. no we're gonna vote it down 
But uh, it will not happen this year. I was kind of hoping that if we had this technology in tennis, we'd figure out how to have it in football. We were talking about the show. When they go away, you're going to miss the chain gang. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss them walking out onto the field very slowly, the tension that comes with them doing the measurement. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss screaming in your living room, short! I love Short! doing that. But that's right good. before, like right when they get to the ball and they lift it up, and as they're extending it, I'm the first one in my living room. It's short. No, you got to do this. <laughs> oh, you yeah, you do, show with your hand. Put your yeah. hands up. Yeah. This is how short it is. Mm-hmm. Or your fingers. Hubba Microfiche. Hubba. Or I your think fingers. we keep the chain gang even after we go to technology. Microfiche. Just have them out there? <laughs> I think they're there just for show. Even after we have a, a chip in the ball, even after we don't need them anymore, I still want them jogging out there. Mm-hmm. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Will you miss the chain gang in football at Lebetard Show? It won't feel like football without the chain gang. Yeah. I'm telling you, it won't. What's even the argument against them? Mm-hmm. No, they don't actually, dude. They are so often so accurate. Like, we have to ch- – what, you challenge maybe one or two things a game? Well, you only get one yeah, or two challenges. No, I'm saying for yeah. both teams. Like, but, no, you do – if you get it right, ref, you get more though, than one challenge. The chain challenge. gang is different. The chain gang does 10 yards at a time. They don't do anything. I don't feel like we've had very many chain gang controversies. I have told you guys before, (laughs) this sport seems hard to officiate. We argue and yell about a lot of different things. The placement of the football is not something we spend a lot of time arguing about. I'm surprised how often they get that one right. I, That's I mean, not I, true. I feel like we always argue over bad spots. Uh, or mm-hmm. like yeah. bad fans spots. that feel like they get screwed over them argue over them. Even if this technology exists, though, we're still going to argue about how much we hate the technology. Like, mm-hmm. this is torn apart soccer for years. The VAR and offsides yeah. and everything. That's why I stopped watching. It doesn't get easier. Like, to Jess's point, the VAR has not made it less. Like, people are getting so mad. More than ever about soccer stuff. And there's plenty of VAR in there. You think that uh, we don't do that particularly well? I know officiating in general is something that we complain about every week, but I feel like the spotting of the ball, it seems to me that given how hard it is to know this is where the ball was when his knee landed over here, that we don't complain about it that much given that there's human error going to be involved. I'm surprised they get that right as often as they do. We don't really know if they're getting exactly it right. right. That's the thing. And we all of inches, right? They we only show the replays, no. and you're always like, eh, You pay attention good? on consequential plays. There's that's lots of that's plays true. that you're not looking to see where that's the thing true. was. So much so that Jason Kelsey even admitted, and every lineman we've talked to since, and told us, like, yeah, just move the ball six, seven inches every play. No one noticed. No one was paying attention. I'm just saying there's sports fans out there. I'm not one of them, but they <laughs> exist that can look back at every single loss that their team has yeah. had over the last 20 years and blame a spot for it. Not saying I'm one yeah. of them, but... I don't know. Steelers might have 25 Super Bowls if it weren't for the, <laughs> this technology not existing. Jason Kelsey is retiring today, right? There's a press conference. Well, he's holding here. a press conference, Dan. You can't hold a press conference to say you're coming back for another year. That would you? be a jerk move. You can't do that. I hope it's related to his I'm podcast. Back. That'd be great. <laughs> I'm getting texts now from my mom. The Kelsey podcast is affecting my life. I, my mom sent me like in the, like 11 o'clock last night some clip from them. I guess they were crying or something together. And she's like, treat your brother better. Oh, it's not. And, and it's yeah. just like, it's what did you watch the clip she sent you? No. <laughs> what? I, I just saw that there was like the headline said something with crying. But I'm just like, I treat my brother fine. Like, why am I getting punished? Because these two are bonding over a podcast. The Kelsey brothers were weeping on their podcast uh, about there something? There was somewhere. It was. It might have been an old clip of Jason when he was just what. Uh, Talking about watching his brother celebrate, he got emotional and he was crying. So, and it touched your mother's heart, exactly. and then you shit all over that. Well, no, it, it touched my mother's heart to be like, "Hey, be be like," and it's like I'm not even me and my brother have a good relationship. Like I don't know where it came from. It's not like we're fighting right now. She was just like, <laughs> She's "Be tell- nicer to your brother." I'm right. like, "Okay," but I am nice to my brother. Right, I'm with you. Like that's annoying. It's Kelsey's. Why are they affect? Like, <laughs> the, why is this happening? Why is my mom seeing the clip and why is my mom texting me? Be where, nice where to Where is brother. she seeing it? Like Instagram reels or something? Yeah, I think so. Facebook probably. My wife does the same thing with Jason Kelsey and his wife. Like she's always sending me clips. Jason and his wife and what a great family they are and what a great husband he is. And why can't you be more like Jason Kelsey? Uh, Jason Kelsey's wife was all she talks about how she doesn't want to be in the limelight. And then she was at some gala last yes. week now. Right. Oh, geez. <laughs> Let me see the Hartman video here before I go to uh, Billy, because, Billy, I want to get to you on the onside, uh, the onside kick rules changing. Stupid rule uh, change. Uh, but let's go real quick here, Sam Hartman uh, uh, walking us through his hair routine. Can you walk us through your hair care routine? 
routine? Uh, yeah, I was probably I was born with it. It's called the wake up and go. It's this uh, crazy thing where you just wake up, put water in here, and you go dead serious. There's nothing in here. Wake up and go. All Shout right. out moms. You can feel it. Like I'm being dead serious. Yeah, like, it's, there's I nothing. Mean, yeah, there's no problem. There's nothing in here. No that can't be. I, I want to feel him. it so bad. Yeah, I want to fight him. Do you think his draft yeah. stock's gonna go down for lying about his hair? <laughs> I, I don't think he's lying, but Billy does. Is he turning on the voice there? Hey, that voice is like, I'm very, I know how good looking I am. So He's going to be I a talk bust, deeper right? because yeah, of how sure. good looking I am. His voice did have a little bit of an Irish Springs commercial in it. It did, uh, it did have That's a That's a missed opportunity. Irish Springs. He had other hair-related NIL deals this past year, so maybe that was a <laughs> conflict. He's also got to be full of it, right? I mean, that's that. there's product in there. That is luscious hair. That it, can't just be wake him. up, water, and go. I believe him. It seems impossible. Uh, it is so. It is so beautiful, and so I don't. I understand why Jessica believes him. He's a he's a good he Notre Dame boy, good Catholic boy, right. good Notre Dame boy. He's a Wake Forest. For <laughs> well, we'll see. The Maybe Deeks. he's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Who knows? Billy, yeah, what is what is it about the onside kick rules that's bothering you? They want to ruin it. Have you not seen what they want to do with the onside kick? First of all, for everybody that was complaining about the fact that the, the, the when the ball goes out of bounds on a touchdown that it becomes a touchback for the other team, they quickly moved past that. So it seems like that's not going to change next season. They looked at it and they said like they only happened like four times out of 40,000 plays. Move on to the next one. So it seems like next season that's still going to be there. So Wait, you people mean, are mean, saying that that shouldn't be a touchback? No, they were saying that that shouldn't – that. Yeah, they looked into whether or not that was too harsh of a punishment for the team to lose the ball and the other team to get the ball. When someone's reaching out to the goal line and loses the ball right before the goal line. The, the right. reason the Ravens season ended, in other words. That's right. Okay. But, uh, yeah. like, it, the touchback, it it's not hard enough. It's yeah. not, you know, harsh enough. They yeah. should punish the other. They should take points off the board. Wow. You got to protect the ball. All right. You know what? That's fair. It's not harsh enough. There has to be a bigger penalty. It's not. Zay Flowers doesn't just have an echoing off season of shame where Baltimore's mad at him. It needs to be even worse than that. Game over, you lose. <laughs> there. <laughs> Fixed. Good rule. Immediate <laughs> ejection. It's like the first drive of the game and someone fumbles right, into the end zone and they're like, all right, well, that's the game. <laughs> but what are the rule changes on onside well, kick? They're just, they got to announce it? Well, they're, it's proposed. It hasn't passed yet, but they've been studying what to do with kickoffs and onside kicks. And what they want to do is you can only do an onside kick in the fourth quarter if you're trailing. And you have to tell the other team you're going to do an onside kick before you do what? it. What? That's crazy. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. I mean, you can't announce that you're doing it. It takes away from doing it, yeah. right? The surprise factor is why you do it. How many mm-hmm. surprise onside kicks have there Sean been? Sean Payton Super Bowl. Boom. So one. McAfee. <laughs> McAfee, McAfee one did see one. Time on his Two. Open. Yep, on his open. <laughs> Um, I, I think safety needs to be the primary Oh, enough. Concern. If you want to be Wait safe, don't three. play football. Yeah, exactly. Stop exactly. football. Exactly. 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 exactly right. You want to be safe, play enough another sport. Please. Go play Dang tennis. Right. Enough. Enough Golf. with the safety. Yeah. Enough, enough with the, the safety. It's sport. gotten insane. Right. Put it on the poll, Juju. Enough with the safety. Go play tennis. Yes or no? <laughs>